saw somebody post a uh, like the top 10 largest Bitcoin holders, and it was MicroStrategy, BlackRock, US, China, uh, Satoshi. This is not a retail-driven pump. This is all institutional. I mean, they're obviously setting up JD Vance to be the successor. So if we get 14 years, essentially, of JD Vance, if this circulation of elites actually takes place, we can see some like serious structural changes to the way our country works. Microsoft, comparatively to MicroStrategy, is gigantic. It's like David versus Goliath, essentially. Right. So that would be a different player. Do you take any weight of, would you think in the short term, Microsoft putting Bitcoin or short or long term, putting uh, Bitcoin on their balance sheet would be a, a negative? I mean, I, I think things absolutely can be bad for Bitcoin. Um, I, the attitude that everyone has of, you know, just like the number go up crowd, like that's bad for Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is supposed to be peer to peer electronic cash. The people cheering on BlackRock is just like, was the craziest fucking thing to me. Like cheering on these people like that hate us to buy Bitcoin because it raises the price it is only good if you're in this for more fiat. Putting yourself in a house for the average length of seven to eight years, putting that down payment, making all those interest payments, all of the repairs versus taking all that and putting that in Bitcoin at the end of that eight years. I mean, I'm willing to bet the Bitcoiner has more purchasing power than if you were to liquidate your home at that moment. Like, like half of Americans don't have $400 to pull together in case of emergency. They're not buying Bitcoin. Yeah. Bing bong. I am back with another edition of the State of Bitcoin podcast where I've got the man, the myth, the legend, Wes of Bitcoin Bay, recurring guest now on the podcast. But Wes, there's a lot of hubbub about how much Bitcoin you need to retire now. There's a lot of numbers being thrown out there in the streets of how much some people are saying, get to one Bitcoin, get to 0.21. So with everything that's going on, you know, what do you think is the magic number of how many stats you need to retire on Bitcoin? Well, hi. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, not, it's gonna depend on where you're at, like physically, like in the world. Um, and not everyone can have one Bitcoin. I mean, obviously get to one Bitcoin. If you can, if you can get to one Bitcoin, do that. Um, I mean, we're around 70K right now. And I mean, that's like a year's salary for, I mean, that's you know, more than a year's salary for most people. So, you know, if you can't get to that, I mean, 0.21 Bitcoin. I mean, when, and also, when do you want to retire? You yeah. Know? Uh, like if you're, tra if you're targeting 60, so, you know, if you're in your 20s right now and you're trying to retire at 60 like everyone else has for forever, or since whatever, um, then 0.21 will probably be fine. You know, I mean, 0.21 Bitcoin in 40 years, you know, who knows where that'll be? You know, you've got, you've got plenty of price prediction podcasts. Like <laughs> um, 0.1, you know, might even do it, you know, it, 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 but if you move to somewhere like El Salvador or, you know, I don't, everyone's obsessed with Colombia right now. Um, you know, you can probably, you can definitely get it at the lower end, but I mean, in, in the U S I mean, I, I, I want one, I want multiple. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, if you could get to multiple, that would be the, the ultimate goal. But yeah, I mean, I think, um, from it all, honestly, like the point to one is, is kind of interesting because yeah, you said we're, we're sitting here at 70, right? So that's about, you know, 1400 or 14,000, excuse <laughs> me, of, uh, of in us dollars. Right. So average salary is, uh, you know, about 60, 65,000 here in the U S I mean, it's putting away a, a decent sum, like a thousand, a thousand five hundred a month or so for a decent period of time. Um, you know, assuming that it obviously stays here, but I think like kind of getting away from that full number bias is something that, can help adoption a little bit, right? Because I think, you know, getting to one Bitcoin, people seeing it at 70K, that's mm -hmm. pretty intimidating. So do you think that, I mean, that's kind of the reason why a lot of people get into the shit coinery because they want the full number bias. Like, why would I buy, you know, $5 worth of Bitcoin, which is like a hundred sats or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, when I can buy $5 worth of Dogecoin and it's like a million Dogecoins? Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's totally a, uh you know, a thing. I mean, I, I, I start running into people um, every now and then that don't realize that you can buy less than one Bitcoin. I mean, like I told, like I have, I have a friend of mine and she's got a couple, you know, legal settlements and stuff. So she's like, well, I, I like, I don't want to put that in a bank account. You know, like I, they keep freezing my account because I have these large ends and large outs because I'm going through all of this stuff. So she's like, well, I want to put in Bitcoin. 
And she's like, do I have to buy one? I'm like, well, no, I mean, you can, you can start with a hundred bucks. And she literally was like, wait, what? And pulls a hundred dollar bill out of her pocket and handed it to me. She's like, get me started. <laughs> you know? So, um, people still, people still, um, don't realize that. Um, and then on like the unit bias side, I mean, that's why all the ETFs are like, you know, they're 1000th yeah. of a Bitcoin, 100th of a Bitcoin, um, or two, like they do weird ones. I mean, I think like, I, you know, I don't know why they do. I mean, it's because you know bias. Um, and you know, you look at like meme coins and stuff like that. They all print with a billion coins. So if you you know you lot a hundred bucks out, you've got a million of you know, dark maga coin, you know, or what you know, whatever. <laughs> like, so it definitely the big numbers help people. I mean, it's just people like round numbers, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, and whenever I'm driving and I see forty eight thousand, I mean, it's just it's a clean flat number. I'm like, nice, and then you know goes up again and I don't care anymore. You know? Yeah. So it, there definitely is a thing there. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I think it is unique too, because obviously Bitcoin has the the fixed supply and I don't think like everybody really runs their head around that. Like mm-hmm. humans have never really experienced something as scarce as Bitcoin because whether it's gold or whatever, I mean, we had the Winklevoss twins trying to orange pill Dave Portnoy saying they could, uh, Elon's going to mine gold off of asteroids or right. some crazy stuff right there. So, um, you know, do you, think that that is something that i guess like that a greater crypto community doesn't really understand when it comes to bitcoin and that's why they're still dabbling and there's like thousands of other coins still kind of floating around uh this on, on the scarcity side yeah no i mean i don't think that's the biggest like thing to them i mean uh i think i think litecoin has a fixed supply i mean bcash does you know is still is, has all the same uh things like monero has a tail emissions um, you know, I mean, like, so like the, the, on like the, the mean coins, I mean, they have fixed supplies, you know, like when you, when you make that mint, I mean, they have a, you know, that's, that's, there's a billion of them, but you know, that's it. So, um, the, the invention of digital scarcity that Bitcoin brought, I think was definitely groundbreaking, but whenever you look at like the wider crypto market, I, it, that's not what's important to them. What do you think is important to them then? It, from what I from what I can gather, it's just degenerate gambling. Yeah, you know. I, I mean, mean, it seems like I be, because like it, it is interesting the timing of everything that's going on right now, just in like the greater ecosystem of the U.S. Right? I mean, we have gambling commercials on any time you turn on oh the TV, gosh, yeah. like DraftKings is all over the place. FanDuel, you know, gam- like legalizing gambling has just become. Yeah. You know, a more of a desire. I mean, even I, I mean, I, I got a hard rock app, right? I mean, I, I, I'll toss five, 10 bucks. Every Florida's now only legal sportbook. Yeah. I mean, exactly. No free ads though. So if you guys want to, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we'll put that out. yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, do you think that, I guess the meme coin craze almost played into that where, you know, they saw the desire. I mean, obviously the desire for gambling has been there forever. People mm-hmm. have been trying to get around it. Vegas has basically made their whole entire right. economy around it. But I mean, just seeing the demand of like the meme coin stuff almost seems like, you know, why, why are we getting to this level of degeneracy here at West where everybody's got to gamble on something, whether it's a <laughs> meme coin sports or something right. like that? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a whole wider discussion on just like the state of the union. Um, you know, and, and obviously some of the crypto stuff that like is not just the meme coins is like, you know, people are using it for actual like services and things, but like on the meme coin side, like, you know, th- like think about it this way, like you are, um, fresh out of college um you your entire college was during the covid years um you're out now the economy it sucks doesn't matter i don't i don't care what you know the the fed said like you know what the official numbers say i mean like the things don't feel good mm-hmm. um uh kids you know like we like we you know we we, we talk at university of tampa you know with, with their with their with their bitcoin club and um i'm, t- I'm talking with them and they're like like you know some of them like are work i'm coming close with and they're like like people are so alone and unhappy and miserable at one of the nicest colleges, like, you know, in the Southeast. And it's beautiful. It's, it's an amazing, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful campus. The professors are great. It's one of the best cities in the, in the world, you know, and like they're unhappy, they're lonely. They don't, um, uh, they don't think they'll be able to afford a home. Um, they don't like have like hope for the future is, is really what it is. And why, 
when I have, let's say, a couple of thousand dollars in credit card debt, four hundred dollars in the bank, and my take home after you know taxes and rent and everything like that is like three hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, but I heard my buddy made you know forty x on dog with hat. Yeah. And so like out like you know screw it. I don't have to. I don't have to go to the Hard Rock. I don't have to go there and put it, my vaporizing money into a slot machine. I can try and bet on Trump with hat. Yeah. You know, and if if it goes to zero, whatever. I didn't go out this week and in this weekend and, and buy drinks. I just, you know, dumped it here. But if it 40 X's cause you cause you know, Elon Musk tweets out a picture with, you know, Mark Cuban with a new with like a, a woman's face on it. And that's, you know, like <laughs> it's a that's a new coin. It's it's, it's, I know. it's, it's, it's you know uh, <laughs> And then you're rich, and then and then you have ten thousand dollars off of two hundred, and you're like, well, and, and whenever you're one of these kids, that's, I mean, I shouldn't say kids. I mean, like you know, a twenty-two to twenty-six year old with like very little hope for the future and not great prospects. Like, why wouldn't I bet on this or do sports betting? At least I can watch the game with my friends, and we can all bet on the game together, and you know, do parlays and stuff like that. I mean, like, it's what happens whenever you don't have you know, long-term thinking and prospects, you just gamble in the present. Yeah. And it is, it is really interesting that that's a conversation that they're having as a college student. I mean, when I was in undergrad, dude, I was not thinking about buying a house. I was thinking about what party I was going to that weekend. (laughs) Like just kind of worrying about homework, like all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But now it seems like with the inflation and everything just being kind of thrown in their face. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, university of Tampa is a private school. I mean, those like kids, parents, like, you know, they're paying for a private uh, education, which means their parents probably are doing pretty well, you know? Mm -hmm. And if that's a worry for them, that's kind of terrifying with the way everything is going, you know? Um, but with on all all that, right. Um, you know, I've had Gary Cardone on the, on the pod. Mm -hmm. He's a local guy to the Bay. Mm -hmm. He's claimed to, you know, sell his house for Bitcoin. Now, do you think that that is kind of the escape hatch instead of maybe potentially buying a home for, you know, just to buy one, but all right, I could save in Bitcoin here Mm -hmm. and then, you know, maybe eventually buy a home or maybe just rent and keep saving in Bitcoin because, you know, the housing market is just depreciating like crazy. Yeah. So the the whole housing versus real estate conversation is um, a long one as well. And I, I, I own my house. I, the bank lets me pay them <laughs> yeah. um, for the privilege of staying in it. Um, but it's, it's, the, it's the question of like, like, like the, the ROI on, on your, on your dollars. You know, like if I put $40,000 down and I, if you have a low interest rate, like if you can get a, like a mortgage at a two to 3% interest rate, that is buy the house. No problem. You know I mean? Like, cause it, that depreciates over time, but I mean, Bitcoin will probably outperform the appreciation in your house. You know, you got a place to live, but I mean, like, I have a house right now that I would like to get out of, take the little equity I have and put that into Bitcoin, you know, because as an investment, like a primary residence is not a good investment. It only reason it appeared that way is because we've had money inflation, population growth, um, and, uh, de- and, you know, like there's a, a, a some appreciation in your housing value. I mean, like if you, I mean, you, if you bought a house like in Tampa 10 years ago, I mean, like you're doing great on that house. Well, yeah. I mean, I saw like, uh, it was either in Q2 or Q3 or something. The government releases basically like by big metropolitans, how much housing is appreciated by an average. Mm-hmm. And they do like quarter year, uh, like half year, you know, five years, whatever. Mm-hmm. City of Tampa in the past five years when that was released, I'll have to find that. Uh, housing went up 90%. Yep. yep. So I did the math because I'm 30, right? Mm-hmm. So say I had a million dollars worth of real estate. By the time I'm 65, that's worth over a billion dollars just because of that compounding, like basically right. doubling every five years. Yeah. So it's obviously unsustainable. You know, a lot of people maybe got lucky with timing the market. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there is maybe a little bit of luck in, in all these different things. But, you know, I, I agree with you. I think outside of, yeah, I, I mean, I even have friends too who are not into Bitcoin or anything. They're like, dude, owning a house kind of sucks. Cause you gotta, you gotta maintain all this stuff. They're dumping all this money into it and then they're not seeing it. So 
But on the flip side of things, then we're getting into the land of own nothing and be happy. So where's the medium in that? Well, I mean, because like you own you own your Bitcoin, and as long as you have your keys, and it, it, I mean, like it's it's not a question of uh, you know you're not going to own anything, but it's just like where like if you're like where are you putting your money, you know? And if if you're thinking about this from an investment term, like the benefit of owning a house is your is your housing, your monthly housing, your rent essentially is fixed mm-hmm. as long as you have a fixed rate mortgage. Obviously, and I am well aware of all of the repairs and crap that goes around a house. So, you know, so that's not necessarily fixed. But, you know, like if you lived in Tampa, you were renting a, a one bedroom in downtown for $1,200, bucks, 1400 dollars mm-hmm. And then COVID hit and that, that your rent went up year over year, large amounts. And so people just had to, you had to leave. So there's a benefit to staying there, to like to owning your own, your own property. Um, but you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that's a, that's a good question. Do you own nothing and be happy when you're like, Oh, like I have like this fat Bitcoin bag. I have a bag. Like, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. what, what do you do with it? So I, I think like, if you're, if you're going, if you're looking at this, like I'm going to buy 10 acres and put my family on it and grow my family on it, then that's a bit of a different calculus you know like because that's not one you, you've got the dirt you know yeah you know dirt is still valuable um it, it might not appreciate as fast as, as bitcoin but that's because you know it's a much more mature market <laughs> mm-hmm. um so like i think that's a different kind of thing but like it's also a problem where like, people don't want to people you know families don't want to start people don't want to start a family unless they have a house and so yeah i mean there's a, there's a lot of you know, weights on this scale and, you know, it obviously depends on who you are, but I mean, if you're looking purely from uh, an ROI on dollars, like on, on your per- on purchasing power over time, p- putting yourself in a house for the average length of seven to eight years, um, putting that down payment, making all those interest payments because your, your principal doesn't start, doesn't start getting eaten away until like year five or something like that. Um, all of the repairs versus renting somewhere and maybe rent goes up 10% every year. I mean, that's probably unsustainable, but you know, just for the like, yeah. quick maths versus doing that and taking all that and putting that in Bitcoin at the end of that eight years, I mean, I'm willing to bet the Bitcoin has more purchasing power than if you were to liquidate your home at that moment, you know, and like it's for Bitcoin to Bitcoin in to Bitcoin out, I'm willing to bet the renter has more coin and more flexibility. Yeah. You know, like I, I can't just walk away from my house for, I mean, like I have roommates, you know, housemates that, you know, kind of keep things in order, but like, I, I can't like, just like go away for three months, go nomad because I'm paying my mortgage still. Yeah. Like, I, I can't just like double, you know, if my, if my lease is up, all right, well, I'm just going to put everything in storage, pay 100, 200 bucks a month for that. And then I'm just going to travel. I'm going to go, I'm going to do the Nomad. I'm going to do the Nomad game. But I can't really do that without making more money because I have this mortgage payment that has got to get paid every month. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of variables in that, obviously. So it really depends. But I mean, for, like, for a young person right now, I mean, I would not, I would not look at buying a house. You know, I would try and... I would try and put it in Bitcoin. I mean, it's yeah. gonna be, you're going to have more money in the future to buy a house. Are you looking for the best way to store your seed phrase? Well, I've got it for you. It's Stamp Seed. They've got the number one punch place where you can order a full on package where they've got every single thing. They've got all the letters. You could just get it in there. And they've got this sick, sick hammer, which they've engineered to make it so easy for you to punch in that titanium steel plate and store your seed phrase in the most secure way possible. So go ahead and get your Bitcoin off of these exchanges and use promo code Green Candle for 15% off. They're helping power this show. They've got the uh, Bitcoin logo. You can punch it into your seed phrase as well. If you could see it here, they've got a lot of cool stuff. And now I'm helping empower you to get your Bitcoin off an exchange utilizing Stamp Seed and storing your seed phrase in the most secure way possible. Now get to it. All right, 
people that are are just going to have this recency bias and then the housing market crashes and then we're going to go belly up might maybe not to the extent of 2008 but mm -hmm. it could be pretty de detrimental in the short term yeah so you know i mean where we're at with mortgage rates is like historically still pretty low you know i mean like like money is supposed to have a price to it um when my parents bought a house and my same and our same zip code in the 90s it, they paid sixty thousand dollars for it and has sixteen percent interest rate on it. That's crazy. Yeah, but that sixteen percent interest rate is a lower payment than my house that we paid all, like almost half a million for. It was the last freaking affordable house in Tampa, surprisingly, and we're at like a five point four. Our payment is uh, four times what theirs was. Jeez. So if we have higher interest rates, like that's not inherently a bad thing. Like it's like, you shouldn't just be able to borrow money freely. I mean, like when I get handed a, you know, a, oh, do you want a 0% balance transfer credit card with a $6,000 credit limit for 24 months? Yeah. You're, yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> of course. You, like, thanks, I guess. You know, I mean, like, so it, it changes your behavior and we need prices to come down. I mean, like, like th these these houses are not worth half a million dollars. No, it's you know? crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, my house is a hundred years old. And it's like a hundred half a million dollars. I mean, I bought it like at three three fifty, three sixty, or whatever, and yeah, it's appreciated by that much, and it could easily be well over half. Um, That's crazy. Just by now, and I bought it September twenty twenty, so it's like almost what like doubled nearly or like kind of at least like up like 200 K and it's, yeah. it's like, I got very lucky about the timing and everything, uh -huh. but like at the end of the day, it's like, like I said, this whole thing isn't sustainable. So it seems like we're sitting on kind of like a house of cards in the, you know, in the housing market and in just in everything. Um, but I want to get into back about the own nothing and be happy because mm -hmm. I think that kind of plays into the ETFs. Mm -hmm. We talked about like kind of how they're differentiating however much they have for whatever you buy, right? Mm -hmm. There's been a ton of money being pumped into it. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but and I think like maybe not this past week, but a week ago, there was like over two billion dollars, two point one billion pumped into the ETFs in one week alone. Mm -hmm. And we've still been kind of like, I mean, we hit the all time high, but we're floating around the 70 K. So, you know, do you think that there's just always been this pump, uh, pent up demand for Bitcoin and that they're just, you know, essentially utilizing this ETF product or, um, yeah. Or the alternative here, do you think, uh, I guess like, you know, there's always been people buying, we've just never been able to track a basically like, or not being able to track. We haven't tracked how much people are buying on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Um, just because it's not as clear as like it is in the ETF. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think the ETFs have changed things. Um, I don't know if there always was $2 billion worth of weekly demand for new, new coin. Um, but I mean, also, I mean, there wasn't, there, there weren't pipes large enough for that, um, that level of capital to flow through. Um, I mean, you had, I mean, you guess you had Coinbase and, you know, and Kraken and Swan, you know, and all like the larger, you know, un, I think Unchained has an OTC desk. Um, but you were getting Bitcoin that was uninsured and your problem. You know, or it was their problem because it was like a it was a custodian. You mm -hmm. know, um, and now people, you know, the, the, the people with this kind of money aren't aren't, aren't all dumb. Um, you know, they've seen Mt. Gox. You know, like they've seen like, like okay, well, I'm not keeping a you know hundred million dollars worth of magic internet money on some random exchange, but also I don't want this either because I don't even you know like we, I don't custody my current company's money. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I mean, and I am, I, I am anti ETF, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit if Bitcoin is for your enemies, you know, so is ammo, but like, I don't like it when like the dude who says he hates me wants to be dead, starts stockpiling it, you know, that's fair. I, <laughs> like, like, oh, like, oh yeah. Keep cheering. You know, you know, the keep cheering on the dude who lives next door to freaking Langley. Um, and so I, I don't know why, I mean, I mean, we're, we're at 70 K. I mean, like so people are unhappy with the 70 K. Um, and it, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel like 
when we first hit 30k and they just it's just like oh okay yeah whatever yeah people would text me like, oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. I mean, I think this month of November is going to be very timely here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to tell us a lot because like the average return in the month of November from Bitcoin's history is 44%. Now it's an average, right? So um, there's been some months of November that have seen like skyrocketing and then there's been a couple red months but mm-hmm. um, in Bitcoin's history. But I mean, that 44% would put us over 100,000. So I would love that. (laughs) Yeah, we can see some bonkers things happen here in November uh, alone, right? So uh, there, there definitely seems to be a lot of like demand and everything like that. But um, you know, outside of that, you know, the price predictions and everything like that. Does it feel a little bit different having you know Trump and RFK and all these guys come to the Bitcoin conference? Mm And do you think it's, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're recording this, what, like two or three days before the official election. Mm-hmm. So do you, do you put any weight on how these politicians getting into office can, whether it's Kamala or Trump, uh, you know, can affect Bitcoin as either regulatory stuff, price mm-hmm. stuff? Like, how are you looking at that? Oh, wow. I mean, hundred um, percent. You know, I mean, everything is shaped by a narrative, you know, and at, at the very least, if let's let us you know say tr- Trump's in office, um, if he does literally nothing when it comes to Bitcoin, but just is talking positively about it, I mean, like that is a huge improvement over what we've had and what we would have if Kamala gets into office. Where I'm, if she did nothing, you have the Warrens. I mean, like you have these people who like who talk negatively and create images, whether or not people believe them or not. I mean, some people do. I mean, millions of people do believe these people. Mm-hmm. Um, they keep reelecting them. So these people say negative, wrong, vitriolic things that impacts the their constituents, the ones who the ones who listen to them. So at, at the very least, what we're seeing with the you know the Trump and RFK coming, I mean <laughs> literally said like have fun playing with your bitcoin and crypto or whatever it's literally how he ended his yeah. speech you know like literally or whatever i mean like he's an 80s 80s something like that I mean, yeah. he, and he doesn't have to care he doesn't have to like understand bitcoin you know like it, it he doesn't have to i don't need him to do that yeah um what we need is for just like the the ang- like the brakes and the anchors and like you know the hooks holding us back to be removed and that I could that I would see happening un, under Trump. Um, and but I, mean, I think what feels different about the current rallies and the current zeitgeist is that this is not a retail driven pump. You know, like this is this is all uh, institutional. Um, I saw somebody post a uh, like the top ten largest Bitcoin holders, and it was MicroStrategy, BlackRock, U.S., China. Uh, Satoshi, um, and there was you know El Salvador maybe maybe's on there. M- maybe um, I don't even I don't know. Um, but it was all a coin Coinbase, Binance, mm-hmm. um, and it was like if you showed if you showed this to Satoshi, what would he say? Um, and I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't be happy. Um, but it was all institutions are the top ten, which is I mean I guess it makes sense. But institutions are the ones funneling two point one billion dollars in these ETFs. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's not like the individuals. It's not like you know like your your cab driver and all like, like those like. Like we we had 2017 was like the a big wave, and then 2020 2021 was another big wave. But the I mean, like like we've like we've said, I mean, the economy is the economy is shit. The average person, like like half of Americans, don't have 400 dollars to pull together in case of emergency. Okay, so you've discovered Bitcoin and are on the path to financial self sovereignty. But simply holding Bitcoin is not enough. You need to make sure that it's scored properly and you are in 100% control over all your assets. So sharing your keys with third parties and taking on that counterparty risk is not the answer. The answer is pure and simple. It's uncompromising self-custody. And there's no better way to do it than the Bitcoin way. They've got over 25 years of cybersecurity experience and their team of experts can help you properly self-custody your Bitcoin secure your digital life. 
configure your privacy phones, and even establish a plan B residency if you're looking to do so. So I'm gonna help you guys out here and give you a free consultation if you take the first step and visit thebitcoinway.com backslash green candle and you can check out the boys at the Bitcoin way and see how they can help you become self-sovereign. Yeah, I know. I, I think I saw like a stat. I think it's like 60 something percent of Americans couldn't afford like a thousand dollar emergency, mm -hmm. which is very realistic to happen with your car or whatever it is. Right. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, it could definitely happen um, at any point in time. So it is kind of dire. But, you know, on the flip side of things, it, I feel like if Bitcoin couldn't survive institutions getting in, then Bitcoin was never going to win at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Right. So on that note, right, we also we obviously have, you know, people have been cheering on Sailor mm -hmm. um, and he's been, you know, being Chad and fucking buying in all this Bitcoin uh, with micro strategy and everything else. But we've only seen other small players get in. Now, we do have something kind of interesting here where Microsoft is voting on whether or not they're going to put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Now, Microsoft, that's Bill Gates, that's all this stuff. So mm -hmm. another institution and Microsoft comparatively to micro strategy is gigantic. It's like David versus Goliath, essentially. Right. So that would be a different player. Do you take any weight of you know, these other institutions, like, would you, what would you, do you think, I, I don't think anything's like bad for Bitcoin per se, but would you think in the short term, Microsoft putting Bitcoin or short or long term putting uh, Bitcoin on their balance sheet would be a, a negative? Um, I mean, I, I think things absolutely can be bad for Bitcoin. Um, I, the attitude that everyone has of, you know, just like the number go up crowd, like that's bad for Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is supposed to be peer to peer electronic cash, you know, and when everyone, when people are cheering on like these, like the people cheering on BlackRock is just like, was the craziest fucking thing to me. Like they are literally like evil, like evil corp, you know, and what they're doing is hoarding Bitcoin. And yes, you can run an entire economy off of one Bitcoin because it's divisible all the way down, you know, but when you're seeing these institutions that are historically very hostile to you, to freedom, to open source. I mean, try, try putting Linux on a Windows 11 laptop. I mean, like I literally do this for people like often, like, you know, probably once or twice a month. I, and the update for Windows 10 to Windows 11 made it so much harder to do uh, open source software and to like, you know, rip it, rip Microsoft out and put Linux on it. So like cheering on these people like that hate us, to buy Bitcoin because it raises the price it is only good if you're in this for more fiat. You know, like I, 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 I've been living on Bitcoin for two years now and I was selling at 17,000 and I was selling at seven at 70,000 at 17,000. I was, you know, doing everything I could to not <laughs> sell my Bitcoin. I mean, I was selling stocks, um, instead, um, you know, while, while we build this foundation. Um, but the, you know, IDCA every hour straight into cold storage crowd with 4 million UTXOs now at this point, probably has never spent our Bitcoin because they have no idea that you, that you have 4 million UTXOs because you, you were doing 14 cent, you know, 21 cent every second, you know, on, on strike or whatever, you know, and like, in, I, I, we had one of our, our guys, run into that. They tried consolidating <laughs> and like it and your bricked his gold guard. You know, it, it took us like an hour to, to build these, you know, to do the things. I mean, we ended up figuring it out, but like the fees on those are fat. And you're like, oh, well, I'm not going to spend it now. It's too expensive. So it's like, you just have this bag here that grows. And you're like, what are you going to, what are you doing with the bag? I'm going to sell it for more dollars later. You know? So I live on Bitcoin. My net worth in Bitcoin price of Bitcoin going up is fantastic for me. I love it when we have a price pump, you know, but I would rather that pump come from circular economies growing in strength around the world, commerce happening, the actual value of Bitcoin increasing, not just the price. Yeah, no, I mean, I hear you on that. So with that being said, countries now uh, outside of El Salvador, you know, we've got Maya, uh, who's running for president of Suriname, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting really into Bitcoin, uh, running basically on a Bitcoin platform. Mm -hmm. 
Um, obviously, they talked about the strategic reserve. Trump, like, actually kind of, I think it was more tongue in cheek, but he mentioned, like, you should be able to buy some coffee and Bitcoin. So, yeah, he, I mean, that could be coming pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm going to put your uh, put you on the spot here. Do you think that that could happen in the next four years? Say Trump gets elected, right? We'll we'll predict it here. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's enough Bitcoiners in his cabinet or whatever? Like he's got RFK there. You know, all these people seemingly pretty friendly to Bitcoin mm -hmm. in his ear. Do you think that that's a possibility in the next four years if Trump gets elected that we have the potential to at least start to you know utilize Bitcoin for transactions? Yeah, I mean, if um, I mean, and politics is all about uh, rewarding your friends and taking from your enemies. And the the team at uh, Bitcoin Inc. or um, B.B.TC Bitcoin Mag that group has been on him constantly. And you know, he went to PubKey and was like, you know, had someone buy a burger for him. <laughs> yeah, um, with Bitcoin. Um, and yeah, he said we shouldn't be taxing this. This is money. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't be paying capital gains taxes on your on your on your coffee. Which is why I'm so anti this ETF buy and hold strategy because like that is a stock that is like you are treating this as a commodity, like gold. You know, it's just, like you're treating you like like making Bitcoin a capital good. Obviously, means it's a cap, capital gains. But if it's money being used as you know to buy coffee and stuff like that that then there's a much stronger argument to like, okay, well, this, should, this shouldn't be getting taxed on every transaction. I mean, you could set like a $2,000 transaction limit. Inflation will take us past that at some point, you know, but I mean, you could, you, I mean, there's steps there to not tax. Um, Florida has a sales tax holiday. I don't know if that bill got passed, um, but when I was just, when I was up in Tallahassee, almost a year ago at this point, they were proposing a sales tax holiday for, um, I believe it's this coming summer, maybe it's 26. Um, where during the during June and July you don't pay sales tax on purchases made with Bitcoin. So, like, Interesting. The, yeah. So, like, I do think it's possible. It'll depend on um, the House and the Senate, obviously. You know, like what, like it, how those down ballot races go. Um, it'll depend on if there's political will. You know, if there's bigger problems at hand. I mean, like, if, if we're at war, I mean, no one's going to be like, "Don't tax my Bitcoin." Yeah. You know. Um, so I, I do think it's possible. Um, they're, I mean, they're obviously setting up JD Vance to be, um, you know, the successor. So if we get 14 years, essentially, of JD Vance uh, and RFK and Elon, I mean, like if 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 if, the, if this circulation of elites actually takes place, I mean, we can see some like serious structural changes to the way our country works, and I'm sure. Just like everything, there will be the oh, this is great, except for this horrible new thing that, that is now like you know in our daily lives. Like we have to. I mean, I think it KYC to use Facebook yesterday. You know, yeah. The other day, I mean, like, well, like what the hell is that? So I'm like, we could so yeah, all this is all great. You have to scan your iris to get on your computer. Yeah. You know, so I, the short answer, yeah, I do think I do think it's possible. Um, it's just going to depend on, on the political will. Calling all shadowy super coders. I've got an event specifically for you. That's right. I am working with Pleb Lab to help out with Top Builder. Top Builder. It's like the top chef, but for shadowy super coders. They've got a Bitcoin prize worth of $15,000 that you can earn when you showing off your skills. But not only that, you will gain valuable exposure, mentorship, and great collaboration opportunities and a lot of people raised money last year, not just the winner. So you have the potential to show your stuff. All you got to do is sign up now. Between now and December 31st, go through three rounds where you are showing your skills. And then at the end, you will showcase your stuff at Startup Day down in Austin. So go ahead and sign up now and get everything started for Top Builder and showcase your stuff and help build in the Bitcoin ecosystem. All right, enough for me. Back to the show. Yeah, you brought up the state of Florida. So you're working pretty closely with um, the Florida Bitcoin Blockchain. Con the, what it Flo the Florida Blockchain and Business Association. Okay. So, yeah, you guys were pretty integral into helping the CFO basically announce that Florida is going to put 
Bitcoin on its own strategic reserve. Is that correct? So what he, th- what the CFO did was directed um, the chair of the SBA, which is the State Board of Advisors, I believe, or the president um, of that, and said, "Hey, like we want you guys to write a report and investigate putting Bitcoin on our reserves." Um, so he didn't do it, but he's like, you know, the, bu- the bureaucratic, you know, way of saying like, we want to do this. Yeah. So look into it. Um, Jimmy Petronas, um, he's allegedly going to be running for governor once um, DeSantis is out. Um, so yeah, I mean, Florida, Florida is, especially under DeSantis, um, has been very pro crypto widely. And a lot of that is due to the, the FBBA's lot like, uh, education, um, efforts. Um, and the anti CBDC bill was an FBBA project. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing we're working on is a, uh, a, a state chartered bank for gold and silver that you can spend digitally. So like, you know, you, you swipe your card, it sells your gold. And so the idea there is that's one step away from, all right, well, let's add Bitcoin into that too, yeah. because it's a strategic reserve now that the, that the state has. And so they've been very friendly and open. I mean, that, that, that's historically Florida is very friendly and open to business. Um, and so they've been, they've been taking a, 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 as much of a hands-off approach with regulating this industry as possible. Um, so this, yeah, I mean, this is just like the, the most recent fruit from, from those efforts. So it, it's really cool to see, um, you know, he said Miami's going to be the crypto capital of, of, of the world. And I, I say, let them, <laughs> the Bitcoiners will be over here in Tampa. Yeah. And I mean, obviously you guys are doing great things here at Bitcoin Bay. I'm, you know, very happy to be a part of it and everything like that, but Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk about a little some fun stuff, dude. Let's talk about Gasparilla. So, all right. So somebody, Tampa native, explain Gasparilla to everybody because some people might not even know what the hell I'm, I'm saying here. Yeah. So uh, Gasparilla, the, this, the Gasparilla Parade of Pirates is the, uh, is the official term. Bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's uh, pretty much, it's, Mar- it's a pirate-themed Mardi Gras, you know? All right, I'm glad you described it that way because that's how I describe it to people, and I did, and I'm like, maybe I'm just like a, you know, I'm I obviously moved here, but yeah. that's yeah, the easiest pickup. But yeah, Bitcoin Bay, you guys some have a huge announcement that you what announced maybe a couple months ago now at this point, right? Yeah, so we have uh, we have applied um, for. Uh, and I'm, I don't know what I'm allowed to say yet. <laughs> um, I gotcha. But we have submitted our application to the Ye Mystic Crew of Casparilla uh, to have the world's first Bitcoin pirate parade float in the Seminole Hard Rock Casparilla Parade of Pirates. If we don't get the float, we are a hospitality sponsor of a tent along the route. So I can't say that because we actually have paid for that. Um, so we will be having a, uh, a tent. Um, you know, so people who have been here, you know, there's, there's the parade route. And there's tents on either side, and then there's you know the common walking areas. So we have reserved a space so people can come and, Lord willing, watch, <laughs> uh, watch the you know the Bitcoin the Bitcoin pirate float uh, come down the road. So we're really excited about that. Um, the the float is for crew members only. So if you're interested in joining the crew, let me know. Um, but then the tent will you know have food, drink, you know music, and it'll be a fun time or you know getting some custom beads made with our stuff on it. There we go. That's awesome. Yeah. So how many people come to, to Gasparilla? Do you know? Uh, I think last year was like 750,000. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. So but like, I think like just for reference, isn't like Tampa, just like Tampa proper, I think is like less than half a million. Right. I think it's like, I think it's around 750,000. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so like everybody came out, everybody and their mother came out to, uh, well, to Gasparilla. Well, we, we had half a million people travel here. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, like Tampa like balloons during this period. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what the actual population is here now. Um, we're also getting new jerseys made. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we some Gasparilla jerseys. Oh, up. Gasparilla jerseys. Really? Oh, breaking news. Corey, get to work, man. We're, uh, oh, we're putting these out there. S- samples have been ordered. Okay, oh, yeah, great. No, yeah, no, we're going to be hockey ones. Oh, okay. There yeah. we go. That's pretty sick. Dude. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, hopefully a little lightning themed in there or what? So, uh, we're we uh, are we're inspired by the lightning uh, Gasparilla jerseys they did last year. Like okay, the, the, the black and gold with the yeah, the like little skull it. thing. Yeah, yeah well. so we uh, you know we kind of did the Satoshi version of that. There we go. That's pretty sick. Yeah. That's the, awesome. The eye patch has a lightning bolt. 
So okay. Like, there's a little bit of lightning. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I didn't even know that. So this is breaking news yeah. to me too. So, um, but yeah, so how big do you think that that is going to be just to get, uh, you know, Bitcoin in front of the average normie, right? Even if they're boozing heavy, right? Mm-hmm. Gotten beads thrown everywhere, you know, having a good time at Gasparilla. How important do you think it is to integrate Bitcoin into a lot of these, I guess, like traditional, you know, uh, traditions almost, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're at like a, almost like a hundred, 108. I mean, we're in a, over a hundred years of Gasparilla. Yeah. Um, so I mean, this is a long time Tampa tradition. And I, I do think it's, I mean, I, I do think it's, I don't think like Tampa is going to like put it on its balance sheet the next day. You know? Yeah. Um, but what it does is like, people are like, Oh, what the, like a Bitcoin float. Like it, it, it gets it kind of in people's, like it gets it in front of people. Um, it shows them that like, you know, like that we exist, that, like we as a group, as a foundation exist here. Um, that there are locals, that this is like something that's like, this is a part of the community that's, you know, uh, coherent enough to put together a parade float. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are excited for that. Um, I do, th- I mean, I, it's, it's, I, I can, you know, I'm, I'm, it, these things are broadcast on all the local networks. So I, I, can, I can see like, is that a Bitcoin for like, you know, like the people stop and they wait, what the heck? Like this, they have a, you know, so I, I, I the memetically, I think it'll be uh, um, a powerful, you know, act. Are you looking for a way to earn some free sats? Who isn't? Well, I've got the perfect way for you. It's an app called YoPaki. Besides having the absolute coolest name in the game, they've got an interactive card game called Lotteria. Oh, look at that accent. I'm just hitting it, huh? That can teach you the history of Bitcoin and financial literacy. They've got amazing services and one of the slickest mobile wallets. Download it now using this link and you can get 500 sats on the house on Green Candle. And then you can play Lotteria every single day in order to potentially get some sats. All you got to do is match the cards and it's an extremely fun and interactive way to learn more about Bitcoin. All right, enough for me. Let's get back to the show. And I think like it, just the act of orange pilling, it takes a lot of touch points. So mm-hmm. whether it's like you heard Bitcoin on the news or whatever, you saw it in a float, it's another touch point for yep. the average person to kind of drive them towards learning about what Bitcoin is, what it stands for, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So at the very least, that's like a huge positive right. for all this stuff. And, you know, honestly, we won't even pr- probably be able to like measure the effects of having this float, but I think it's astronomical. So, um, yeah. How can people find out more about the Bitcoin float and, uh, help support? Yeah. So, um, our website, bitcoinbay.foundation, um, Casper is right there. Uh, you know, you can find our Twitter is Bitcoin Bay TPA. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on there. If you DM that, you're DMing me. <laughs> um, or maybe Fabio. Uh, so, you know, yeah, we're, we're really excited for that. And yeah, I mean, basically what we're doing is increasing the touch point of half a million people. You know, not everyone's going to be paying attention at that moment, but like half a million people are going to get adding one to that ledger. And you like, and we don't know like the ripple effects are. I mean, like when we did, when we um, won the Bitcoin games in Miami uh, in 2023, we donated half of that coin to the, you know, some of the other contestants. And I just talked with the Denver BitDevs um, group they they donated you know a, a thousand bucks to our hurricane relief efforts, um, and they have since they were one of, they were one of the winners. We I think I don't, I don't remember how much we gave them back in, back then, but they've started a, another Bitcoin park essentially in yeah. Denver. Like he said, like they were kind of like just you know spinning their wheels, kind of tearing along, and then they got this injection of like I, I don't I don't remember how much it was, but they got you know a couple million sats. And then now they've got a member, a, a whole member building that they that they operate out of with sixty plus, you know, paying members, like monthly recurring. And we've had probably, I mean, probably like at ten new nonprofit formations um, since since we were the we were the first Bitcoin meetup to incorporate as a five hundred one c three. Since then, I mean, I get I get probably one or two messages a month saying, "Hey, we're looking at doing this. Like, can we talk?" I'm like, I'm always happy to do that. Mm-hmm. So we're we're probably around ten or more new Bitcoin nonprofits in the United States because of what we did. And like, that was exactly what our, our hope was. I mean, we, we were the tip of the spear. Like we're not the biggest, we're not, you know, we're not the best, but like we were the first ones to do it. It's like when someone breaks the four minute mile or whatever, Yeah. You know? and then now, and then now, okay, we can do this. So, I mean, I just learned about that. I mean, this is a year and a half, year and a half later, like there's a whole building and, you know, community that now exists because of 
something that we just, you know, it was a flipper racing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we were just trying to have fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Shout out to space Denver. I actually yeah. made a trip uh, out there like, and they were, they announced it at the meetup I was at, um, the Denver bit devs. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, they've got a great community out there. I mean, there's great communities all around the country. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, Bitcoin Bay, you know, we, I'm, I'm a little biased. I think we're the best down here. So, yeah. um, the Gasparilla is one thing that I'm super excited about. And I encourage everybody, not Bitcoiners and, and everybody alike just to come down, just to experience it because mm -hmm. it's truly a unique a tradition to Tampa and you know I mean it's a ton of fun yeah. I, mean, okay. I mean everybody's uh you know you're up at the crack of dawn and crap popping that first uh, bottle of champagne yeah. for a little mimosa to get everything started so um I'm really looking forward to that but we're also working on something here mm -hmm. so why don't you go into a little bit about um you know what we're working on together here yeah. Wes and I yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm capable of focusing on one thing and just executing on it. I have to have, you know, 16 pots on the stove. Um, so, uh, what, what we're doing now, and I appreciate you helping me with it because it, it definitely, it's like everything It's like, Oh wait, there's actually a lot more, <laughs> a lot more to this, um, is, uh, we're starting a new cross the bridge program. And so the idea is you're, we're crossing the fiat bridge, um, into kind of like the new digital age that we have. Um, and we've been doing it for a while now. You know, it was our, uh, it started kind of just as like our general like guidance program. You know, like we have our weekly meetups. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one consulting, um, but, you know, it's just another avenue for people to get support. And, you know, with, with your help now and the macro insights, we were leveling this up a bit to, you know, like at, uh, cut through, you know, the BS of, you know, I mean, there's an ocean of information out there. And, mm -hmm. and, and people are like, well, why should I pay you? I can just do this myself. I'm like, go go do it i don't, yeah. don't want to spend three hours on setting up you know your you know your basic crap i mean i do i mean like i do it you know i don't mean i don't mind it but like would i rather do something else for three hours or would i rather you know go go through your computer's bios and, and, and crap you know like, yeah feel free go do it yourself here's here's free guides i mean we have we have free self-custody guides cybersecurity best practices glossary terms like yeah take them take it do whatever you want i <laughs> feel free to dig and dive through this ocean of Miss this malformation. Um, so you know what we're doing now is distilling all of that, bringing together you know the whatever the macro trends are right now. I mean you know AI obviously was one that has now ballooned, and we are now seeing the second order effects of that. You know, but identifying the new ones. Um, you know, like my one, one that I'm keeping an eye on, I think is uh, um, reju like rejuvenation and life extension. You know, the, the boomers are not going to want to go. They're not mm -hmm. going to go quietly into that good night. Um, and so biotech and like all of like that, that's, there's going to be a whole new industry around life extension for people who don't have kids, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so identifying trends, getting ahead of them and also, you know, doing one-on-one, -on -one, um, financial, like, uh, I don't think we can say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll be basically like kind of like lining out. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, the macro trends, all that kind of stuff. So you can make the best decisions for yourself going forward, right? We're, we're here to kind of help utilize our expertise. We've done, you know, tons of out, years of, you know, studying and trying to figure out this whole mess for ourselves yeah. and talking to a bunch of people, a lot of industry experts. Um, so yeah, we're putting it all together so we can help, you know, you uh, figure that out really quickly just with like weekly meetings and everything like that because i think part of the issue now we've kind of like lined it out in this podcast is the average person whether you're in a college a college kid or an adult working or whatever you either have to become a hedge fund manager yourself um or kind of figure all that stuff out and spend a lot of your time figuring it out in order to do something that we can help you do or like distill really quickly in about like an hour or so. Yeah. So on, on a weekly call. So let us do the research for you and, you know, kind of go through that because we've done years of it um, already. So, uh, and we'll help you bring you along so you can, you know, make those decisions and kind of figure everything out, you know, mm -hmm. yourself. So I think that's uh, kind of like the gist of all. Do you think I missed anything? Yeah, no, trust the experts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we talked about a lot of like, we, we've scratched the surface of like several subjects and cutting through that and setting up a plan that guides you through that. And like, like, okay, like this is what I can do in the next 90 days to get clarity and take action on 
I have this bag of, you know, maybe you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mid-career professional. I've been working for a lot longer than I thought I was going to be working here for, and, you know, maybe now like I have this 401k that kind of does whatever, you know, I got some money in the bank, you know, like what do I do with it? So, you know, giving some ideas, helping, you know, make decisions and then also collaborating with others. You know I mean? That, that's the big part of, you know, what, what we do. And that's my, my favorite part of Bitcoin Bay is the, the people that we have here are all, experts in their own, in their own field. I mean, and it's so interesting to talk to people and like hear their experts perspectives. Like, like I'm not a real estate guy, but you are. And, uh, you know, our buddy Lee is. And so I get to talk to real estate people and this whole building is a real estate place. So I, I hear from and get to learn and talk about all this stuff. And I mean, that's my, with these calls too, is like, whenever I, whenever we have a topic, like I, it's topic I want to learn about, mm -hmm. you know, like whenever I have a question, I'm like, Hey, like, Hey, what, why is gas cheap right now? Like what's going on? I thought they were blowing chips up in the, in the, in the red sea. Like, like, well, what's happening here? And then mm -hmm. we'll just, we'll talk about that for now and we'll riff. Um, and then the, uh, the one, then there's all, we also are going to do one, one, one on ones with people, um, to just kind of sit down map, you know, where are you, where do you want to go? Let's map that out. Um, and there's also stuff that can't be done in the calls. Like you're not going to want to, tell everyone you know, all your stuff but mm. you know or you know like i asked this it's saying somebody up on bisc you know they're, they're troubleshooting things like that so I, i'm excited to grow it you know we've been we've been kind of we've been doing it and stewing for for a little while now and you know i'm glad that you know we're, you know, we're doing this together and this mm -hmm. is you know also benefits you like your listeners is that they get to now be part of you know a community that that you are you know so yeah 100 percent. If, if they don't get enough of you know enough of you here you know there, there's plenty there's plenty more to go around yeah if they don't get enough of me yeah then all the time into a mic yeah. yeah um yeah definitely um so yeah you can figure out more about that across the bridge.io mm -hmm. and yeah we'll put all that in the show notes and everything like that so feel free to check it out you can uh see all the content and stuff we're, we're making out there we're almost oh i'm sure by the time this episode comes out we're launching so yeah, um yeah uh so everything else is going well one question i did forget to ask you here wes is what is the date of gasparilla oh yeah it is january 25th 2025 so it's i believe it's the last saturday in january okay so, so it'll be a beautiful time to be down in florida it's you know, it's freezing your ass off wherever whatever frozen hellscapes you all come from <laughs> um and you know it, it's normally a, you know a, a, a lovely 60 degrees you know, here in sunny Florida. Yeah, exactly. All right, Wes. So one last question. You are the Bitcoin Bay founder. So I want you to, to like, it's kind of like the Jordan Belford thing, right? Where he's like, sell me this pen. Mm -hmm. Sell me Tampa Bay, Florida right now, Wes. Give me, give me all you got. Why, why should Bitcoiners alike who are listening to this all over mm -hmm. the globe move to Tampa Bay? Well, um, you shouldn't. It's bad here. It's hot. <laughs> There's mosquitoes. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it, it's, it's the it's the best it's the best place in the world. I mean, we have we have sunset on the water because we're on the west coast, which is so superior to sunrise um, on the water. Um, we have in the Bay Area three major metropolitan areas with St. Pete, Tampa, and Sarasota. Um, our airport's one of the best. You know, Nash Nashville is nice as well. I, I will you know admit Odell is right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got we got pretty good sports teams. You know, I mean, they our, our hockey team is. Traditionally done pretty well. That we did just lose our our, our captain, my mayor, uh, Stephen Stankos. I was really trying to get him to run for mayor. You know, so yeah, I yeah. Was really trying to need that <laughs> to happen. I would have loved that. Um, he probably would have won, honestly. I, he's like, yeah. If they had won like a Stanley Cup like last year, and then like, he retires and runs for mayor, he's winning. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I probably would have voted for him to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> our current our current mayor. Uh, yeah, and she ran unopposed and had a twenty percent write up. Yeah, you know. Um, but we got the best beaches. Uh, we got great food. I mean, it's just, I mean, you just have to come and see it. I mean, people who, people who come here, um, people who think they're going to hate it. Um, some people, are, some people I wish I wouldn't move here, <laughs> fall in love with and come down here, you know I mean? And it's completely different than Miami and Jacksonville. I don't know what's in the water along the East coast of Florida, but I, I do not claim them. I mean, like the Tampa Bay area is a unique area. It's not like any other place in Florida. It's not like Orlando. I mean, everywhere in Florida is so, is so different. Um, and it's right here is the best. I mean, we've got some of the best beaches in the world and all that. Um, it's been tough, you know, after the hurricane. Mm -hmm. um, the hurricanes. I mean, God, we're not, I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not Asheville, but I mean, there's definitely some repairs to be done. Um, and so we also appreciate everyone who, who supported our, our, our fundraising campaign for our affected members. Um, uh, she actually came over to our house yesterday and 
uh, I told her that, you know, we had raised, you know, I think we're about $1,500, $1,600 and she was like almost in tears. Wow. So, um, then, and that's really what community the Bitcoin Bay is about is about building community. And this was an opportunity to come together. Um, so you actually might not want to travel <laughs> to the beaches right now just because they're Destroyed. Yeah, they're cleaning it up a little bit, but hey, they'll be ready by Gasparilla. Yeah. I'll, put, I'll put it out there. So yeah, Tampa Bay gets voted one of the, the I think the St. Pete Beach or Siesta Keys, they're always like one or two yeah. best beaches in the U.S. Beautiful. How can you not be, uh, or how can you not be uh, happy when it's all sunshines and rainbows out here all the time too? It's yeah. always great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, come visit Bitcoin Bay. Just don't overstay your welcome because you're, you're, you're jacking up the price. And uh, yeah. And uh, Wes, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, tell people, I think we mentioned it a little bit, but why don't you go over where they can find out more about you, Bitcoin Bay and all that other stuff. Yeah. So uh, Twitter and Instagram is Bitcoin Bay TPA, uh, much more active on Twitter. Uh, website is Bitcoin Bay Foundation. Uh, you can email me at Wesley at Bitcoin Bay Foundation. Um, and our cross the our cross the bridge program is at crossthebridge.io. All right, and I'll put all that in the show notes. Wes, thanks so much. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of the State of Bitcoin podcast. If you really enjoyed this one, I've got another one cooking up for you. You can click that right here, and you can go to the next episode, which is an absolute banger where you know I'm bringing you only the latest and greatest guests. Or if you're looking for more macro-related content, you could check out my other channel, Macro Insights Pod. I got it linked for you right here. So where I'm bringing you more about stocks, real estate, traditional finance stuff. So go ahead and check that out. And if you enjoyed this podcast, go ahead and hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, enough from me. I'll see you at the next one.